Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, the powers of darkness, they've been defeated by Christ, and now in the authority of his name, Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, may this hall be sealed in your presence, and may this entire school be fortified with chariots of fire, and may all people in the proximity of my voice be under the influence and the dominion of the Holy Spirit. May you use me and the interpreter the way you use Elijah on Mount Carmel. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good evening. God bless you all, and you are welcome in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, you need to understand something about, let's just make it formally, Christianity. Christ, you know, he is the center of Christianity. Before sin entered in the Garden of Eden, God gave Adam and Eve terms and condition of lifestyle. Of all the trees you can touch and eat the fruit, but that one there, do not eat the fruit. So when you come to God, if you desire to live for eternity, if you desire to live on the new earth, you need to start living under the terms and conditions of heaven. In a nutshell, do what the Bible tells you to do. Remember that. If you don't do that, then you are not living for God. Remember that. And today, the title is, How Long Can You Hold Your Breath? Uh, you know, sometimes me and my kids, we try to do our lung taste, you know, by holding our breath. And we exceed more than the normal requirement for the lung on that taste. But God today, He is asking you to hold your breath only for seven seconds. See how gracious God is. If you can hold your breath just for seven seconds, you have no idea how many blessings God wants to give you. You'll understand about the seven seconds. Baptism is mentioned 80 times in the New Testament. Now, this tells you how important baptism is. So, the question to you is Are you baptized? Are you? 1 Peter 2, 21 says, God called you to endure suffering because Christ suffered for you. He left you an example so that you could follow in his footsteps. So, Bible is telling us we should follow Jesus and Jesus alone. There is no salvation in any pastor, any bishop, any prophet. 
Paribe chipulumoso mumbu sauri yense bishopi kapena mneneri. Salvation is only in Lord Jesus Christ. Ndetu chipulumoso chipeze kama Yesu yeka Kristo. So you must study His Word. Chainela kuapunzira mau yake. Because there are so many diff different different types of baptisms. Paguti mau baptizo ariosi ya nasiana mitundu yake. Matthew 4 verse 19 says. Mateo 4:19 Jesus said to them, "Come follow me, I will teach you how to catch people instead of fish." Yesu anati kwa iyo, ndi sati deni ndi za kupunzisanu ugwira wantu kuposa ukukala o ugwira nsomba. So again Jesus is saying, "Follow me." Yesu akanena ndi sati deni. Remember we need to follow him, we need to walk as he walked. Musaiwale kumusatira ndi kuenda monga ana indena. If you are not following Jesus, ngati simusatira Yesu. You know, please listen. Tambani. Don't think that just because now that you have accepted Him as your personal Lord and Savior, you are following Him. Osa ganiza po musatira nu vomera kutindi mulunguwa kuwana kupulumusa basi wakala osatira iye. If you don't do what He is asking you to do, you are not following Him. Ngati suchi tazimina lukufunza kujeta. John 8 verse 12 says, Once again Jesus spoke to the people. This time he said, I am the light for the world. Follow me. Yes, And you won't be walking in the dark. You will have the light that gives life. So when you follow the Lord and Lord alone and abide with the word and word alone, you will not be confused with different types of doctrines. What do I mean by different types of doctrines? Pay attention. Matthew 5, 17. Matthew 5, 17 in Dime. Don't suppose that I came to do away with the law and the prophets. I did not come to do away with them, but to give them their full meaning. Musaganiza kuti ndinabwela kuachosa neneri ndira mulo. Koma kubwela kwanga ndi kuti sopano. Ndinabwela kuso nyezani tanta uzo leni leni. So Jesus is telling us, I came to uphold the word of God. Hali utiuza yesu ndinabwela kunyamula. So here, types of baptisms. Sprinkling drops of water usually to babies. Immerse a baby. Orthodox churches, they do that. Pour a little bit of water on a child 10 or 11 years old. Completely submerged adults under the water. The next one will shock you. Rose petal baptism. And then you are baptized. Because somebody is dressed like a, a big priest. And declares you baptized. Let me tell you the truth. One pastor tried snow baptism, liquid or solid, no difference. Others baptized by olive oil. One pastor somewhere in this world baptized with a dry hand. He said, you are baptized now. So please listen to this very carefully. Heaven is offering you life and death. Heaven is offering you an opportunity of lifetime to live for eternity. No sickness, no illness, no disease. No depression. Happiness for eternity. So please, if you want that offer, 
Follow Jesus according to the Bible. Let's find out how Jesus was baptized. Matthew 16, verse 18. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now remember, 1 Corinthians 10, 4. And did all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. So if some people, they say the, the rock is Peter. Don't even go into the, into the scholarly thing about the Greek. Here the Bible tells you point blank. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 4, the rock is Christ. Peter so the whole church is formed upon Christ, the solid rock. Just as Ephesians 4 verse 4 says, all of you are part of the same body. There is only one spirit of God. For verse 5, we have only one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Also, verse 6 says, there is only one God who is the father of all people. Just like we say, one Zambia, one nation. The Bible tells us one spirit of God, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God. So there are no many methods of baptism because here the Bible tells you there is one baptism. And if there is only one Lord Jesus, then let's find out how Jesus the Lord was baptized. Luke 3.21 Luke 3, 21. When all the people were baptized, Jesus too was baptized while he was praying heaven open. Verse 23, Jesus was about 30 years old when he began his ministry. Jesus, so people thought, was the son of Joseph, the son of Eli. So Christ was baptized as an adult. He was not baptized as an infant. Jesus was not baptized as a small boy, but as an adult. Matthew 3.13 says, Matthew 3, Jesus left Galilee and went to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. He did not go to the house of John where John the Baptist or the place where John the Baptist was saying so he can tell John throw some, some drops of water on me to baptize me. Sana pite kunyumba kwa yohani kumane na kuti sopano ponyako pampumi tumazi kuti ndi badizidwe. But he followed where John was baptizing. Verse 16. So Jesus was baptized and as soon as he came out of the water so here it says he entered in the river and he came out of the water not the river but the water now if he came out that means he was under the water and it says the sky opened 
And he saw the Spirit of God coming down on him like a dove. Verse 23 says, John was baptizing in Enon near Salim. Water was plentiful there. Ndime 23 kuti Yohani analu badiza mu eno ni komweko mazindi papupi ndi salimu maziko anari ambiri. So now here we can, we can, we can, we can confirm from the Bible. Apa tinga vomereze ndi Bible. That the true method of baptism according to the account of the scripture that Jesus enters into the river then he gets into the water and he comes out of the water, meaning the true method of baptism to follow Jesus is to be totally submerged into the water. And there it is, the Jordan River. Also, another account from the Bible, Acts 8.36. Now, as they went down the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Now remember, this was an Ethiopian eunuch. He was coming from Ethiopia to Jerusalem. And it was a long journey in the heat of the desert. Common sense tells you if, in, if the journey is long in the heat of the desert from Ethiopia to Jordan there, to Jerusalem, it's obvious he carried drinking water. But he did not tell Philip that Sprinkle some water on me to be baptized. See, here is water. Acts 8.38 says, so he commanded the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and he baptized him. So look at the way it says, they went down into the water. Jesus said, follow me. Yes, the scriptures they tell us follow the Lord, He's our example. Jesus, He went down into the waters of Jordan River. Yes, Peter, Pansipa, Mazi, Amusinje, and he came up out of the water. Just like Ethiopian, you know. Again, I read for you. And he commanded the chariots to stand still. And they went down both into the water. Both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. Verse 39. And when they were come up out of the water. You see, it does not say they were coming out of a small pond or small river, but out of the water. Just like Jesus came out of the water. Philip knew how Jesus the Lord was baptized. And remember, don't make your own church. Make life applicable according to the word of God. Meaning, when you come to God, do what he says. So here's a conclusion. John 3 verse 5. One, three, and five. Jesus answered Nicodemus. I can guarantee this truth. 
No one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. So if you desire to enter heaven or if you desire to live for eternity, remember, you need to follow protocols here. And you cannot postpone the blessing of baptism by saying that, hey, I'm clubbing, I'm smoking, I'm drinking, uh, maybe I'm committing this sin. I think I need to I need to come to Jesus, you know, after I clean up my life. Let me tell you one thing. Jesus came for sinners. Romans 6 verse 3 and 4 says, Don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Please listen. Listen. You know and you believe Jesus Christ died. Then you say, no, I believe in him. It is good that you believe in him. That he even resurrected. But for you to be accepted, you need to die with him. Just as Jesus died. But now, in the grave of the water, verse 3, 4 continues, where we were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order. So, pano tinakala, o fochere duwa manda nae kupyore la mubadizo, muifaya ke kuti. That's just as Jesus Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Kuti monganso yesu wana ukisidwa, kuchoke la kuwakufa mulemero wa tate, na feso kuti tingakari le moyo wa so pano. You know, in South Africa, there is this phenomenon which happens sometimes. It is called ancestral calling. In the entire map of South Africa, school girls, Start talking in different language. An Indian girl can be talking in Zulu. Her eyes have been rolled up like Undertaker. Some are crying. There's, there's chaos everywhere. And they call that ancestral calling. That means ancestral spirits sometimes they manifest themselves. It happens many times and no pastors are allowed in some schools. Only the, 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 the sangomas are allowed. To start throwing whatever they throw on the ground to appease the, the ancestral spirits. And we have seen that. All of a sudden, they'll start running everywhere, mad. All eyes are up like this. Some are crying, some are screaming. You'll find a colored girl, she doesn't know Zulu, but she's speaking Zulu. What do you think of that? You see, when you come to Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit wants to enter in you. They call it ancestral calling. In some cultures, they also call spiritual cleansing. Now, when you want to come to God, you also need cleansing of your past life through the ceremony of the waters of baptism as those ancestral spirits they enter in those guys Holy Spirit wants to enter in you because please listen 
terms and conditions, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. So when you believe, you need to go through the next step, baptism. And once you are ceremonially cleansed like that, through the waters of baptism, then the Holy Spirit comes in you. You tell yourself, I'm dead to my old self and the old sinful way of life. When you're totally taken down into the water for those seven seconds, if you, are, if you are afraid of the water or to get into there, you can even count it only three seconds. We can just take you in, bang, speak a blessing, bang, you are out. That's a burial of your sins in the watery grave of baptism. That's a resurrection to a new life in Christ. That's what it means. To die with Christ as he was crucified on the cross. To be buried with Christ as he was put in the tomb, we go into the watery grave. As Christ came out of the tomb, resurrected Christ, glorious Christ, we also come out of the watery grave to live a new life. What is a new life? Life according to the word of God. That is to date to our old sinful way of life. Burial of our sins in the watery grave of baptism. Resurrection to a new life in Christ. And that's what baptism represents. Crucified, died, buried, resurrected. So the baptism of Lord Jesus Christ baptized as an adult baptized by the true baptism of immersion. Apostles and disciples practice the same method of baptism. We ought to follow the same footsteps of the Lord Jesus Christ. Even in one of the churches in Philippi in the first century, it has been discovered that there was a baptismal pool. And those who do not know what Christianity is, who are just looking for shortcuts of blessings and prophecy, I prophesy. They go to church to church just to hear prophecy. Because they only want blessing. But they don't know Jesus also said, carry your cross. Deny yourself. Lay aside all your plans. Live for me. There are a lot of things involved there. Here, baptism of Russian King Vladimir the Great not baptism by sprinkling of water, but he was taken deep into the water. That's why I've been telling you over and over and over. Every moment, every second. Somewhere, somebody is giving his or her life to Christ. You know... You've heard of this country, India. There is a place called Mumbai. When the colonial masters came, they changed the name Bombay. 
Pamenepo asamunda wa jana lulamu ni ila pakubwela kumachi njazina alo kukari lakuti bombe. But one of the most patriotic parties in India, Bharatiya Janta Party, just call it BJP, they took everything back to its original state. Akuti shipani chimozi BJP uyu waku India, anate ngambali mozi ya malo ya kuzikorit. They said, we don't want Bombay anymore, it's Mumbai. Now, Mumbai comes from a goddess which is worshipped there called Mumba. The tribe which is worshipping this goddess called Marathi people. They come from a state called Maharashtra. These are warrior people. Warrior people. Very patriotic. Very staunch in their belief. But if you go to Maharashtra right now, there are a lot of Adventist churches there. Google it, find it. Not just one or two, there are so many of them. There. They sing in Marathi, they preach in Marathi. The most difficult people I know personally. To convert. They have accepted Christ. And they get baptized. As a matter of fact, I'm a Gujarati, I'm not a Marathi. And the state of Gujarat, that's where Gandhi comes from. To my surprise, there are so many churches there. We've got so many schools in that state of Gujarat now. That should tell you. If you hear God's voice today, do not harden your heart. You see all these baptism slides I keep showing you. It is to tell you the truth that this is important for your salvation. You do not need to make a decision to postpone this. People are getting into this watery grave. And they are coming out of this watery grave. Steps to baptism. Repent a genuine sorrow for sin. That does not mean you're just waiting to feel that you are now going to hate sin. No. The sorrow to sin comes through conviction. When you are coming to a place like this, when we preach to you and you feel that you need Jesus, that's a sorrow to sin. Number two, believe an acceptance of Jesus as both Savior and Lord. Then learn in the baptism class, go through the orientation of the scriptures, instruction in the essentials of Biblical faith. And remember, it is ordained by heaven for you to be baptized. Acts 22 verse 16 says, and now why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized. And wash away your sins calling on the name of the Lord. You know how powerful this act of baptism is. You see, whether we baptize in the swimming pool, in the river, or whether it's in the baptismal pool in the church. Let's say we baptize you at the church. That water is a municipality water. It's an ordinary water. 
But once it is prayed for and dedicated to God for that ceremony there, because it has been prayed for now. Anyone with a demon will fight to not enter there. They'll start running away. From and you cannot deep someone who doesn't want to be deeped at that moment. The demons will be screaming. That's not the water of your tap water now anymore. It is a water which is blessed by heaven. That's how important baptism is. Because Jesus was baptized too. No one should postpone your baptism, not your husband, your wife, your, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, or your boss. You know, no one has power and authority or mandate given from heaven to decide on behalf of you when you should and when you should not, when you are ready and you fulfill all the requirements of the baptism because to do that, it is a sin in the sight of God. My question to you is, what are you waiting for? The water is waiting for you. The class which should start here is waiting for you. The pastor is waiting for you. The water is waiting for you. Heaven is waiting for you. How long can you hold your breath? We can baptize you in three seconds. You stand. And this is where the water comes. We speak a blessing upon you. You hold the hand. Count how many seconds. The moment, the moment we give you a blessing, amen. Bang. 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 Out. There is nothing like keeping you more there and you'll be baptized more. That's That's nonsense. nonsense. Boom, boom, out. What are you waiting for this year? You've been preached to all these days. You've been coming most of the days. We have a couple of names who have been given to us for baptism. If those of you who have given your names to the ushers and if you are still here, I'm challenging you to come in front here right now. Let these people see that you have already made your commitment to Christ. If you're already there, those of you who have already given your names to the ushers for baptism, come in front. You don't need to feel shy. We are not going to put you uh, on Facebook or somewhere there. Come in front. Come in front. Yes, we know these who are coming, they are not three, we know they are more. So don't feel shy, there we go, people are standing. Yes. These who are coming, we know these who have already given their names to the ashes. There are ten, I know now there are how many, one, two, three, four, five. Where are the other five? How many of you would like to join them? For you to be baptized the way Jesus was baptized. There is a hand at the back there. Just remain that the usher will take all your details. Is there anybody else here? Who is saying, I want to be baptized the way Jesus was baptized? There is two more hands, the ushers, please go to them. How many more would like to make this commitment to heaven because 
the gift of immortality and eternity, you know, it comes through also the blessing of baptism. Be, be baptized the way Jesus was baptized. Just raise your hand. What are you thinking? There is one more hand, the ushers. Please go to that hand there. You know, I was also baptized. <laughs> I was baptized, you may not even think of where I was baptized. I was baptized in Chawama compound. Because when I had an encounter with Jesus, I resigned my former employment for the gospel. I was looking for Bibles. I wanted to buy them in bulk so I can give it to less privileged people I find on the road, you know. So I bumped into a Seventh-day Adventist deacon who was selling Bibles. Worshipping in Chawama. And that's how my journey started. I was baptized. In the year 2000, 2000, September, September, I was dipped into the water. Now this, believe or not believe, it's up to you. You know, after baptism, I go back to my uncle's house in Chadley. I'm alone in the house. I took a shower because now I need to change clothes and all that. Of course, I changed my clothes at the baptism site also. After taking the shower, I was sitting in front of a mirror to, to comb my hair. I'm alone at home. And listen what happened. A voice said this, Brother Patel, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Believe or don't believe, it's up to you. Even my acceptance of Christ was also through the voice at my workplace. A voice told me there are many, they don't know, they need to be saved. And you know, it's like a journey of Moses. A guy with a short temper. Now me at the age of 23. Living the full life of the club and party and gangs. But, but the voice chose me. And here I am in God's service. Not ashamed of the gospel. How many of you would like to accept Christ tonight? And you're saying, I want to be baptized the way Jesus the Lord was baptized. I want to be buried with Christ. Don't delay these blessings. Don't. The time is already up. You know, when you preach to a total non- Christian audience. Like the one in Durban. You find Hindus and Muslims and drug addicts, they are all there inside in the audience. You have to keep talking. 
for 20 minutes. And sometimes one hand will be raised. Because this is eternal life matters. Same applies to you. There is an angel of darkness and there is an angel of light by your shoulder right now. There is a battle going on in your mind right now. The angel of darkness is telling you why you should delay or why you shouldn't go in front or why you should not be baptized. But the angel of light is telling you just accept Christ. Stand up and go in front. That's all is needed. I'm going to close this with a count of seven. But I'm going to give you some small opportunity to do some evangelism there where you are seated. Tell your neighbor, let's go to Jesus in front. Tell your neighbor, let's go to Jesus in front. Tell your neighbor, let's go get baptized. Tell your neighbor, let's go for new life. Tell your neighbor, you need to be born again. Go and get buried with Jesus. Let's go in front. Or do you want me to speak in some of the local languages here? Isheni Kuntanshi. Tahakwano. Kamubola. Oh, you want me to tell you in my own language, Gujarati. Anyao. Oh, you want me to tell you in the in the national language of India, Hindi. Yahape Ajao. Come. Izani. Come in front. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Koza. Amen. Amen. Let's count to seven now. In seven, if you feel you would like to join this, and many others will be joining. Don't feel shy. Just come. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise God. Amen. One, two, three. Stand up and just come. You know, if you really feel the one sitting next to you, you know, is really, really battling to come in front. Just grab the hand of that person and bring that person to Jesus here. You will even receive your blessing for by bringing that person. Yes, come in front. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Six point five. Seven. Let's pray. And remember, as I'm praying, if you'd like to come in front, just go look for an usher and grab the hand of that usher and give your details to the usher. As our eyes are closed and I'm praying. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for the gospel of your kingdom, the gospel which tells us you love us and you'll continue with this love and your love is everlasting and you are willing to walk this walk with us as our Father with, with, with divine patience to make sure that 
you will save us from the uttermost to the guttermost and you are able to receive us, forgive us, wash us and transform us because that's your greatest pleasure and your pride. Yes. I praise you, Father, for this blessing is possible because of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is our high priest. These who are with us, who have, you know, come in front to declare that they accept Christ, may you receive them in a special manner. May you wash them with the precious blood of the Lamb, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May you dispatch special band of angelic protection 24-7 to be upon them. And may you give them the courage and the power of the Holy Spirit. And may you ordain a day for them to be baptized. A day which cannot be touched by the entire forces of darkness. But that day ordained by you will be graced by your presence and be blessed by your spirit. As we go back home, may you take us safe back home and bring us back tomorrow. For we ask this for your glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your time and your patience. We'll meet tomorrow. God bless you.